Ghana Water Company uh, suspects illegal mining activities is still ongoing on the Pra River in the western region despite the ban. Uh, according to the water company, the water color has returned to Brownish River Pra is one of the major rivers in the western region that serve as a source of raw water for treatment by the Ghana Water Company, limited for distribution to more than one million residents in Wasa East, Shama, and Sekendita Krade metropolis. The, but the activities of Galamse operators has rendered the river unwholesome and threatened the very survival of the river and other surrounding water bodies. The company has begun an exercise to dredge the intake point at the Dabuase treatment plant. So we are currently here at the Dabwasi treatment plant and essentially it is one of the many production points for the Ghana Water Company here in the western region. We are precisely on the Pra River and this river is where the officials will draw water through the intake point to treat for onward production to the residents of Sekendi Takrade. And I will let the camera pan to how the river has become in recent times. If you look at the state of the river, it is something that is not Right, uh, so uh, we have in the studio a gentleman who is coming to help us uh, with understanding of exactly uh, what is happening. He's from the artisan uh, small scale mining Africa at work, Edward Okoku. Uh, thank you very much for coming. So uh, let's uh, get to the bottom of uh, the re resurgence of Gullam Sea operations. If I say resurgence, from the uh, results achieved in the past by the Operation Vanguard team and the entire interministerial tax force to clamp down on uh, Gullam Sea operations, it does appear it's coming back with a bank. Are you aware of this? Yes, uh, thank you very much, my brother, and good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, I think that, um, first of all, um, we, from the civil society angle, have always said, and in fact, uh, I want to say on record, if you Google some of the statements by Asman, mm -hmm. right from 2013, 2014, right to the term of this government, we have maintained that the strategy that this country wants to use to fight Galamse will not work. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we are back to square one. First of all, we did say that, look, the issue of Galamse is more than an environmental issue. It's a bread and butter issue. It's a livelihood issue. And from research, what we all know globally, if you take anything that somebody, you know, depends, depends on Depends on survive, for livelihood. The person so your thinking <laughs> is that the approach was wrong was because wrong. the government didn't make provisions look, first to of all, give alternative livelihood to the miners. At all, because the alternative livelihood are, you know, policies that would take time to yield results. These policies were not ready. And then straight away, and we said that... So take time means that exactly. you think everything was and rushed And we said that, look, the, the, the strategy to even fight it was wrong. First of all, we have maintained that the use of this operation Vanguard and the military will never work. Mm. It ends up enriching a few people. At the end of the day, what happens is that these people, you know, I mean, become familiar with the, with the illegal miners. Mm. They build acquaintances with them. And then, you see, the sector we are talking about is a sector where there's a huge capital inflow. Miners, and they have a lot of money, they always use the money to influence people, no matter what. Mm. These are very powerful people. And our suggestion has always been that, look, this is a national canker that requires a local solution. Right, Mr. Koko, I'll have you hold that uh, because we're trying to re-establish contact with our reporter on the Pra uh, side of uh, the river, on the Pra River side, Eric Ajay, to give us a further update on what's happening there. Meki, the river has become, and we understand that this is essentially because of the activities of illegal miners dotted on the river. 
I have with me the production manager, the regional production manager for Ghana Water Company Limited, Mr. Vincent Dako, and he will tell us essentially what is happening here. Good afternoon and welcome to Media Live on TV3. Thank you very much. So I tell us, we know that you've begun some um, rationing ex exercise. How are we doing? Uh, currently, the situation is uh, not as uh, it's not it's not as bad as it is, but we have to manage the situation. So, as part of the water management, we need to do rationing because uh, our production has reduced a little bit. Uh, we we used to do an average of. Uh, 22,000 cubic meters a day, but currently we are doing about 16,000 cubic meters. And there's a shortfall of 6,000 cubic meters. And because of that, we need to do rationing because the supply is not able to meet demand. And the, uh, even with the 22,000 cubic meters, there is a demand shortfall. And with the, uh, on the, the, the dry season, the situation, the, 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 the situation is not all that good. So the problems are uh, uh, aggravated. So we need to take in measures to be able to uh, continue supply our customers. Okay. Tell us, what is the production uh, history of this intake point? What normally happens? Okay, for this place, uh, it's been a perennial thing. When it gets to a dry season, we don't get a lot of inflows, so we, 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 our production goes down. But the current situation is that now the, the, uh, the can I say activity has worsened the situation. And we have a lot of uh, silt inbuilt at the, at, the, at the intake site. So the volume of water that we can abstract for production has really gone down. From where to where? Uh, Currently, we are at a, at a level of one meter. The maximum level is supposed to, it used to be 5.4. Now, we've gone as slow as one meter. And within the one meter, we have a lot of silt inbuilt. So we need to take all the silt out of it so that we'll be able to continue producing water to our customers in the secondary Takwadi uh, metropolis. And how are you going about um, the silt in the place? Currently, we have an excavator on site, and uh, hopefully by the close of the week, the, the certain exercise would have been completed, and we'll have a lot of uh, water at the intake to be able to produce, to increase our production, and that one might uh, uh, give some uh, uh, respite to the customers. So we are hoping that by, at, the, at the end of the week, Things will improve and customers will be will be better off. How much are you? How much is it costing you in terms of production? Uh, our normal uh, uh, production cost per uh, per cubic meter is about one city twenty pesos, but currently we are doing about two cities per cubic meter. So it means that uh, the the production cost has gone up, and that one is something that. Uh, we need to do something about it because with the Galamse activity, it is really having a toll on us. And Iraqi uh, power supply too is also a challenge. So that is a situation that we have ourselves in. Okay, Thank you very much, Mr. Vincent Dako. So you had the uh, regional production manager giving us an insight with regards to what is going on. And I'll let the camera pan to the intake point and you can see that the place is becoming murkier. And as you heard, there's an excavator on standby to uh, do some uh, dredging of the intake points. Eric here with JTV3 News, Takradi. Uh, very worrying uh, narrative. Mr. Koko, you heard the narrative there. I mean, just to truncate what we were saying earlier to just that observation. That's very scary. Very, very scary and very worrying, you know, and in fact, the trend is not just worrying just concerning just our waters, mm. but it's worrying in so many respects. Um, and like we were saying, you see, we, we are of the view that it's a national problem that requires a local solution. Mm. Now, our suggestion has always been that district chief executives who are members of the district security committee should be charged mm. because, you see, every district has its own peculiar dynamics. Now, if you ask a DCE, 
who is the chairman of DISEC and the police commanders and the rest are all there and you tell them that look you're going to sign a performance contract one of the conditions of your performance contract is that you must make sure that there's no you know I mean, uh, arriveness of uh, Galamse in your community. Once Galamse goes on, it's very simple to sack the DC, and no DC will sit down. You see, we have always said that once you form this, use this national approach, military men going up and down and all that, they build acquaintances, they are influenced, and mm. we come back to square one. Mm. To look at where we are. Mm. You see, one of the mistakes we made was when we put out this outright ban. One of the mistakes we made was that we said at that time that look, hold on to these mass Chinese that you've arrested. Don't deport them first. Hold them, let them, their various companies fill, backfill the various places they have dug before you deport them. We did a mass deportation quickly. Government promised to actually backfill all these places. As I speak to you, most of these places are there. Mm -hmm. They are there, they are unfilled. That problem we've left it. Mm -hmm. Now we are looking at community mining. Now I'm telling you the community mining policy is good, but it may not work because mining demands a lot of financing. Most of these community people, where, who is going to finance them? Government is not going to give them money to finance. It's mining we are talking about. Now, eventually they will end up contracting some of these foreigners or right. hidden so, people. So, so your, your thinking is that the, the, the lack of an effective framework exactly. has brought us here. Exactly. How can we move forward away from here the, and fix the problem? Actually? The way forward, like we are saying, mm. first of all, let's look at it as something that requires a local solution. Mm. Let's tack the dissect. Huh? Let's make it part of their key performance indicators. Let's also use the district mining committees yeah. because the, there are district mining committees. They know where the, you know, galamses are going on. It's very difficult sometimes to identify these galamse sites from, let's say, or Boase as Galamstop headquarters. Yeah. It's very bad. Every district, the people there, they know. They know. Let's empower the right. Minerals Commission which is the institution mandated because they have a geological map mm. of where the mineral deposits are. Mm. They know. Let's empower the EPA. And then also let's empower the various civil society organizations. And then let's have a national command center where all of them will report to. And then we can do a quarterly review mm. of stakeholders. Let's meet every quarter and review the performance. Mm. This is the only way, the surest That's way. That's the only way forward. Uh, otherwise, so, well, I'll take our listeners through uh, some uh, legal, the, the legal provisions in uh, the Minerals and Mining Amendments Law of uh, uh, 2015, which uh, Section 99.5 expressly uh, says that where a person is arrested for an offence under subsection 3 or 4, any equipment used in or associated with the commission of that offence and any product derived from that, uh, regardless of the ownership of the equipment, uh, will be seized and kept in the custody of the police. Uh, the seized equipments were not uh, necessarily kept in the custody of the police. They were kept at the municipal assemblies, which is uh, what brings us back to the same problem we're tackling now. Section 99.6 also says, a court which convicts a person for an offense under subsection 234 shall, in addition to the penalty that it may impose, order the forfeiture of any equipment or product seized under subsection 5 to the state. So uh, you may recognize that these were the uh, constitutional provisions that empowered the, the minister at the time to seize the, the equipment. Now, section 99.7 says the minister shall, within 60 days after the confiscation of the equipment or product, allocate these equipment or product to the appropriate state institutions and Publish in the gazettes the name of the state institution to which the equipment or product is allocated. I reckon that this is the uh, leeway that allowed the, the ministry to deposit uh, the equipment with the uh, municipal assembly. So these are the, the, the laws that border on uh, how uh, minerals and mining uh, equipment are regulated in the industry. Right, uh, so Mr. Kokwa, I mean, I just uh, gave our viewers a perspective of right. the law. So, uh, quickly, uh, to, to wrap up a few seconds, yes, uh, what quickly, should we be doing um, now? You've told us what the way forward right. should be, but right now we are in this scenario of mm. uh, confiscation, and now there is a court issue. CID has arrested people, mm. and we're back to square one, really. Yes, uh, first of all, let me just have a quick bite of the law. You know, mm. one of the 
um, you know, uh, problems with the law is that most of our police stations don't even have a space mm. to even, you know, take these equipment. Mm. That's one of the things. Now, the other thing is that we have always said that, look, uh, one of the major problems we created too was when we outrightly banned even small-scale mining. Mm. Because it's a livelihood issue. Mm. Mm. People, some people have legitimately acquired concession. They yeah. have to survive. Once you ban them, Look, they will find a way to survive. And that is what has brought us here. And that's what today, I'm telling you, today now it's so rife, it's so rampant on the field now. So I think that the way forward now for me, I think that we need a national stakeholder, mm. you know, meeting. And then we need to re-strategize. That's the best way forward now. We need to re-strategize. See how best we can actually create local solutions so that the various areas where these problems are going on, we can empower the local duty bearers, the chief executives, the DC. Because look, the DC is a politician. Yeah. If he knows that once he fails, the president will sack him and say that, look, you were able you to pretend then over Galamsey. Then he will he's, set he up. He's going to set mm. up. And any po police commander who knows that, look, if I survive, so pretend over Galamsey, I'll be sacked as right. a police commander. Mr. Gok, we're grateful for your time. Thank I know this much. conversation is uh, intense.